This is a tutorial on the Desmos graphing calculator. Now, Desmos has taken this core tool, the graphing calculator, and built a couple other things, quite a number of things for use inside the classroom with interactive features. It uses a lot of the sort of core code base, um, but that's complicated to get into so many different details right now. Just to focus, um, this will just be on the, the primary tool that Desmos provides. Um, it is a graphing calculator you get to by just going to desmos.com. Um, I do wish to note that it's fast. Um, it's fast because it's implemented using JavaScript and that doesn't have to mean a whole lot to you other than um, when you uh, load the web page we haven't clicked on the the link button here for graphing calculator yet but the moment that happens you know you have your internet connection um, everything in JavaScript loads up and that's it um, at that point, everything's run on your own computer. There's no reliance on the internet. There's no typing something and then waiting for it to travel across the internet and some server somewhere to crunch something and then send back what it looks like, nothing like that. So it's a, it's a very instantaneous feel because uh, once the, uh, the uh, web page is loaded, we'll go ahead and click on it. Yeah, once this is loaded, like here, this is the view, um, I could, in principle, use all the features in Desmos even without an internet connection at this point. Um, so that speed, I think, I think is going to be very helpful. So uh, how is this different than a traditional graphing calculator like a Texas Instruments or something? Is that you know when you start up a you know a TI eighty four or something like that, you usually start in one view where you're typing things like two times three and then getting a result for that. And then if you want to graph, you've got to go to a different screen, so to speak. Um, with this graphing calculator, the focus is really on that screen, the one where you see that graphing occur, um, and uh, the the things that you're graphing are 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 always sort of simultaneously in view. Um, another difference is that the user interface is a bit adapted. It's it's made to be very natural for people who use the web. And finally, um, this graphing calculator online takes advantage of having a better display. So even a really basic laptop, you know, the number of pixels. Think about how those old graphing calculators, the images look very pixelated. Um, here we're also going to take advantage of a lot of color. Okay, so before we really get going, though. Um, we should note that for the person, the user, you know, who's the the person who's at the controls of the keyboard and mouse, there's sort of fundamentally three different kind of mental modes one can be in, and I guess I'll call them design, explore, and explain. And these are not things that are that you would be telling to Desmos at all. This is just sort of a shift in your mind um, for the person who's behind. Um, yeah, the keyboard and mouse. What what kind of mental mode are you in here? And there's a couple different overall paradigms that, that I can think of, at least off the top of my head. Um, first, you could have the teacher design something before class, right? The teacher designs, yeah, designs an entire Desmos, you know, project thing ready to go before class, and then opens the project in class uh, to explain um, something, right? So, some, and, and we'll sort of simulate all that uh, soon. Or the teacher designs something before class, and students, uh, the, the link um, to the project is sent to students, and students have to explore and explain something perhaps to each other, perhaps they're filling out a worksheet in class. Um, or you could have students design, uh, yeah, students design. Um, probably with some level of detailed instruction, they're probably not using um, every single feature, right? Uh, um, maybe this is done for the purpose of exploration. Uh, maybe something else. Maybe they're really just showcasing something, perhaps instead, um, you know, or for drawing. And we'll kind of get into that a little bit. Or there's uh, these are all sort of uh, kind of design. Um, prior instead of designing live, but there's also the situation where the teacher perhaps designs on the fly in class while explaining. So imagine, you know, a certain question comes up in class and a, a hand drawing is just not going to be quite refined enough to explain something. So maybe you think, oh, I know, I'll just, I'll just uh, start up the projector and I'll, and I'll graph something here. So uh, without further ado, let's get going. Um, you can 
do some basic things. So if you wanted to do something like 2 plus 3, you can do that here and get that. But this is not what this is really designed for. So I'm just going to delete that line here. And now we're starting over. You can graph a function, like f of x is equal to x squared. Um, uh, some people may prefer it this way, but I'm just going to go with y equals x squared. That's not going to change anything. Um, what I'll do is actually graph y equals x squared again. And now it's showing up in green. So I've got one copy in blue, one copy in green. Here's some things that we can do to this. So what I did was I clicked on this gear button right here. Um, in this settings-like mode, we can now click on the color uh, label here and say, oh, how about that first parabola I want in black? And maybe I want that in a dotted style, okay? The second parabola, uh, yeah, let's just leave that in green, okay? Um, and so we can, you can now sort of see both the the dotted parabola in black, and then this green one. And uh, what we can do is, um, now that we're out of the settings area, you can take either of these and click them on or off. I mean, we could have done that before changing the design. In fact, if I go back and make this now, you know, say blue um, and solid, I make this one red and solid, then it kind of has a purple hue right now. If I turn off the red altogether, you see the blue. If I turn the red back on, turn the blue off, it, can, it gets a little redder. This one's a little more subtle. Okay, so um, what might we do with this second copy here? Well, we might change this to say um, y equals x plus h quantity squared. Now, as soon as you use pretty much any letter that's not x or y, it's going to ask if, hey, would you like to create a slider? So this, you know, this h is going to be a parameter that we can control here. By default, these always seem to be set to be 1 um, with values between negative 10 and 10. Now, I think it makes more sense for the purposes of this to say that the value of that should be between, uh, sh should start at 0. So at this point, um, if we move the slider to the right, I think students may s believe, if you were to do this in class at this point, that the, the parabola that's in red is going to shift to the right. Yeah, but then there's that, this thing that happens. Now you can change, so we, we started the default value at zero so as to not give anything away. Um, this slider's um, range is, you know, at the smallest it'll, be set to negative 10 at the largest it'll be 10 but you could change that if you only wanted the values of h to go between negative 5 and 5 um, if you wanted to really ensure that you had more fine grain control you can set the step size here as i don't know if we're pushing it too much to do 0 .0, 0 0.001 yeah i guess we were we can do some something like this or say oh you know what these numbers and sometimes uh, two two significant digits after the decimal place as much. You could change the step size to be that, uh, to be 0.1. And, or you can even create a more discrete control by saying that the step size should be 1. So we only have integer values of, of h by doing this. The integer values probably doesn't make sense for, 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 the purposes, for the purpose here. But I think what we actually have, now having designed um, a slider, uh, we have something that looks kind of the way it should. So I'm going to do that mental shift and say, hey, I've designed something. I have something that I think could be used in class, perhaps. So I'll, I'll leave my design mode, and now what? I should save this. Now you have some options. You can create a Desmos account and you know title things and save things using the upper left button here. Um, that's fine. Um, I think if you have a lot of things, it's helpful to do that. But I think the quick thing to do right now is click this button, share a graph, and then we'll create a, uh, Desmos created this link here, and I'll just copy that link. Now, what can you do with that link? You could, you know, put it in your learning management system for students to access. You could just link to it in your teaching slides or something like that. Um, the thing with this link is it is permanently tied to this information that's right here. So if I open a new tab, and I could do this in a new browser, I could do this on a different computer, I could do this on a different day, I go to this tab and it's going to look precisely like what's here. Now on the new tab, so the second tab let's say is, you know, I'm trying to simulate now say being in the classroom, I go ahead and make some changes and um, that's not going to affect what, what happens back here. And if all I do is reload, now it's going to say, oh, you know, the changes you made will not, 
may not be saved. This can't. This is not at all connected to the the project that's in this other tab. This is this is just trying to say, hey, if you did a significant amount of work here, you're gonna lose it, right? So we'll just reload this this tab. Um, it makes sense from a security standpoint that um, by publicizing this link. Uh, you don't want somebody else mucking up your project, right? So uh, we just, you know, I'm going to repaste in that same link that's in my clipboard, and it starts off back here. So even if we set this slider to five, um, let's say I open a new tab, open up here, this will look the same. For that matter, if I go back to the original tab and I change a slider here, um, that's still not connected to that link. So I, uh, yeah, I'll set in, in the original tab where we were designing everything, maybe I'll change H to negative five. I come back over here, still load this link up, and that link still goes to this. So this link, you know, this one, you could type it in yourself. Um, I think it's desmos.com slash calculator slash, ooh, is that a GJ, is that an L? I don't, or is that a capital I? Okay, eight, or whatever, right? You type this in, in your own browser at any point, and it will send you to this very thing. So reliably, you could paste this link into your learning management system, or you could paste this into um, your slides and you know where you're gonna be starting off. And so I, I could you know perceive, for instance, pasting this in, uh, starting this at the beginning of class, and now, because it's already been designed and I don't have to waste any time doing any design or confuse students with all the design features that are going on. Just kind of explain what's going on here. Tell them, oh, there's a blue parabola hiding behind the red one. Here, let me show you for a second by hiding the red one and then, you know, play with the slider.